My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today, we'll solve some multiple choice problems that you will find on page number 70. Page 70, beginning with number 54. Let's see what we have. After having watched this video, if you found it useful and if you decide that you would like to work with me, that you would like to hire me as your tutor to get you ready for the GMAT, you can get hold of me by sending an email at kishwaniprep at icloud.com. Number 54. In number 54 it says that the sum sum of five numbers we are told we have five numbers and the sum of five numbers we are told is 3250. We are further told that if each one of these numbers, if each one goes up by 10%, what happens to the average? That's all it is. And the average goes up by how much? Well, if, if each one of those numbers in a series, whether you have 5 numbers or 50,000 numbers in a series, if each one of them by, goes up by exactly the same proportion, for example, if you have, have 50,000 numbers, whatever their average, it doesn't matter what their average is, if each one of those numbers doubles, average will double. If each one of those numbers goes up by 10%, the average will go up by 10%. That's all it is. Well. The average, average will go up by 10%. And that's all there is. And what was the average of the of the five numbers? It's right here. We know the sum, and we know there are five of them. We know their sum. The sum is 3,250, and we know there are five of them. That was the old average. It will go up by 10%. The question is, how much does the average goes up? We simply have to find out 10% of that amount. 10% of that amount is simply one tenth. One tenth is 10%, isn't it? Let's see what we can do here. Let's see what we can do here. Well, we are, I see a zero here and zero here. Let's divide top and bottom by 10. That will take care of that. And let's divide top and bottom by five. How many five does 30 have? How many five does three has? Three has no five. Three has no five. What happens is that three, three goes and joins the, joins the two and becomes a 32. And how many 5 does 32 have? 32 has, 32 has 6 5's. After we, take away, after we take away 30 from the 32, we have a remainder of 2. What happens to the 2? The 2 goes and joins the 5 and 25. And 25 has 5 5's. There you go. The average will go up by 65. That's all it is. The average will go up by 65. And that's all there is. Number 54. Number 55 rather, we did 54 just now. 55 says that we get X dollars, person is paid X dollars per hour for the first 40 hours. For the first 40 hours you're going to get X dollars per hour. After that you're going to get, after that you're going to get 22 dollars per hour for hours beyond 40. We are told that we earned $816 for 48 hours. The question simply is how much is X? How much is X? How much did we get paid per hour for the first 40 hours? Let's find out, shall we? Well, for the first 40 hours we are getting paid X dollars per hour which means for the first 40 hours we're going to get 40 times x. After that, anything beyond that, we're getting $22 per hour, and we know how many hours we work. We work 48 hours, which means 48 minus 40, we have 8 hours that we worked beyond 40, for which we got $22 an hour. And altogether, it adds up to $816. $816. That's all it is. We just have to solve for 
we just have to solve for x. Let's find out what it what 22 times 8 is. What 22 times 8 is. Well, we know 20 times 8. We know 20 times 8 is 160. And then two more 8 is going to be 16. 176. Let's subtract 176 from both sides. We get 0. 11 minus 7 is 4. We get 640 equals 40x. 40x equals 640. Let's divide both sides by 10. 0 is going to drop out. Let's divide both sides by 4. 4 is going to drop out. 6 has 1 4. After we take away 4 from the 6, we have a remainder of 2. What happens to the 2? 2 goes and joins the 4, becomes a 24. And 24 has 6. 6 4. There you go. X equals 16. In other words, we were getting paid $16 an hour for the first 40 hours. Anything beyond that, we were told that we will get paid $22 an hour. Number 56. Number 56. I hope you understood what I did here. You see, you see, 10 times 8 is 80, isn't it? 10 times 8 is uh, 10, uh, 10 8s are 80, and 20 times 8 is 160, which is what this is. This is 20 times 8. So I took 20 times 8, and then I uh, took two more 8s, which is 16. Number 56. Question here is what's the ratio of angle B? to angle A. Let's draw the triangle. The triangle looks something like this. We are told that this is y degree. We are told that this is y plus 10 degrees. And we have to pay attention to details. We are further told that this is right angle. Well, if that is right angle, it's a very straightforward thing. If that's the right angle, then we have 90 degrees left. And this is y, and this is y plus 10. It has to be, well, it has to be 40 degrees and 50 degrees, because it's y plus 10. This angle is 10 more than that one, so it's 40 and 50. The question is, what's the, what's the ratio of uh, angle B to angle A? Well, angle B, well, we never put down where, where the letters are. This is A, this is B, this is C. Angle B is 40 degrees, and angle A, angle A right here is 50 degrees. There you go. The ratio is 4 to 5. The ratio is 4 to 5. And that's all there is. Number 57. Number 57. Wouldn't it be nice if the data sufficiency problem went that fast? Here we have to find approximate value. And which is precisely what we're going to do. We're going to not waste our time trying to figure out the precise value. We're looking for approximate value of 7, 8 plus 1, 9 over 1 half. So what we're going to do in the beginning, what we're going to do over beginning is, we're, going to worry, we're not going to worry about the denominator right now. Let's find out what that is. So that 7, 8, 7, 8 plus 1, 9, we're going to approximate that as 7, 8 plus 1, 8. We're going to pretend, we're not going to, actually we're not going to pretend, we are, we are saying that 1 9 is approximately equal to 1 8. It's very easy now. 7 8 plus 1 8 is just 8 8, which is just 1. So that boils down to 1. The top quantity, the top quantity is approximately 1. And then we have over 2. So 1 over, or rather 1 over half, that boils down to 2. That's it. That's it. Is that quantity is approximately equal to two? Number fifty-eight. Number fifty-eight. Number fifty-eight says that we have two positive two-digit two-digit integers x and y. We have positive two-digit integers. Two positive two digit integers x and y have same digits, same digits, but in reverse order. In other words, 
if one happens to be one, two, three, the other one is three, two, one. We have two, we have two positive or oh, two digit integers. These are three digit integers, but you get the idea. You get the idea. These are two digit integers. Well, we have two digit integers, so one is 98, the other one is 89, like that. It says, which must be, which must be a factor of their sum, x plus y. Which must be a factor of their sum. The key here, the key here is understanding how to express a two-digit integer in the algebraic language. How to express two-digit integer in algebraic language. For example, for example, let's do it on the top here. For example, if we had 89, let's say, okay, pay attention, if we had 89, let's call 8, 8 is x and y is equal to 9. y is equal to 9, 8 is equal to x. How do we express 89 in the language of algebra? Well, you see, what it is is, the reason why it's called 89, the reason why it's called 89, the reason why it is called 89, is because it's made up of 80 and a 9. So, if x is equal to 8, then how do we express this thing? This should be expressed as 10 times x. There you go, that's your 80. And this is your unit digit. There you go. So here we go. Here's our first first two digit integer. Here's our first two digit integer. And the second one has is are the same digits, but the but they are they are in reverse order. They are in reverse order. Instead of 89, we have 98. So 90 is our y, so it's gonna be 10 times y plus x. There you go, 10 times y plus x. That's the, that's, the, that's the same two digits in reverse order. And we are told their sum, their sum is a factor of what? Which of the following must be the factor of x plus y? That says you, well, I shouldn't have used x plus y. This is going to be very confusing now because I'm using x and y to represent, represent, uh, represent the two digits. Uh, that was not a very bright idea. Number 58, is it? Number 58. So where it says which of the following must be a factor of x plus y, change that to a plus b. Change that to a plus b. So there is our a, there is our b. b. A and b are two two-digit integers. Do you understand? And they can be written as this. The first one is 10x plus y, the second one is 10y plus y. And the question is their sum must be a factor of what? Which of the following must be a factor of, factor of their sum? out of the answer choices that are given to us. Let's add them very quickly. I'm talking too much. Um, we, we may, we we're making good progress and then I started talking too much. But as you can see, we cannot add them the way they are. This is 10x, this is 10y. And this is y and this is x. So let's put them in the proper proper manner so that we have 10y's over here. And there we go. So when we add them, we get 11x plus 11y. And that's their sum. This is the sum of the two. This is the sum of the two two-digit integers. And clearly see 11 is common. 11 is common. 11 is common which means 11 is a factor of their sum always, always, always. If you have... And try it out. You try it out yourself. Pick anything anything that you like. Try them, try them out and you will see that it always, always, always works. For example, 47 and 74. If you add them, you're going to get 1, 11, uh, 11 and 12, 121, 121 is a factor of 11, uh, 11 times 12 I believe. If you try out anything at all it would work, anything at all, for example 37, 73, that's a 0, 11, there you go, you see this is 11 times 10, they are all multiples of 11. So out of the, out of the choices that are given to us, the choices that are given to us, or can we write down the choices? Choices that are given to us are 6, 9, 10, 11, and 14. The reason, the reason I'm making so much fuss about it is because if you simply plug in numbers, if you just simply randomly take two-digit number and reverse the, reverse the order, 
you may find that 6 is a factor of their sum so is the 9, so is 10, so is 14 any one of these numbers could, could be any one of these numbers could be a factor of their sum but there is only one which will always be the factor of their sum and that, that, one, that one is this guy because that's, because that's what the algebra tells us regardless of what these numbers are regardless of what x equals to and what y equals to it will always be a multiple of 11 the sum is always going to be a multiple of 11 number 59 number 59 I think we spoke too much on that one I don't know if it was necessary sometimes when I start yapping I don't know when to shut up it says the sequence it says the sequence of numbers sequence of numbers after the first after the first is one more then the previous one. They just go by one. We also told that the first one is first one is negative five. Question simply is how many are positive? How many are positive? When you come across a question like that, when you come across a question like this, it is the gift. It is the gift. The only way you're going to blow it if you try if is if you try to be clever. Don't try to be clever. Just do it out. Just do it out. It only takes a few seconds. So we have a sequence of sequence of how many numbers? We have sequence of we have sequence of numbers. Sequence of how many numbers? Fifty nine. Sequence of numbers after each. We have sequence of eight numbers. Sequence of eight numbers. Each after the first one is one more than the previous one. Each after the first one is one more than the previous one. And the story begins with negative 5. Just do it out. Negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, ne negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then don't forget the 0. This is what they're hoping that you will forget. Don't forget the 0. 0 and then 1, 2. These are 8 of them. You see? The first one is negative 5. And it's a sequence of numbers. Sequence of 8 numbers. Each after the first one is one more than the previous one. Question is how many of them are positive? Well, there are two of them. There are two positive ones. Only two of them are positive. That's all. Number 60. Number 60, the last one on the page. Because they are hoping that you will forget the zero. Here we are told that we have total of S, whatever it is that you have. Let's say S candy or S toys or whatever you have. And we are, we are going to put R of them in, in each box. Each box contains R. Each box can take R. We are told that N boxes, N boxes are already full. Already full. Question is, How many more? How many more boxes? How many more boxes? To be filled. How many more boxes to be filled? And here are the answer choices. A says S minus R N. We'll, we'll get to them in a second. So here we have two choices. It's an algebra problem, obviously. It's an algebra word problem. And, and as always, in any algebra word problem in the exam, you have two choices. You can solve it algebraically because it's an algebra problem. We could solve it algebraically in a classical way, in a traditional way, in an orthodox way, in a geeky way, in a nerdy way. Or we can plug in numbers. It's up to you, whatever you feel comfortable with. I'm going to do it both ways. Let's first plug in numbers and then I'm going to show you that algebra actually here is very, very, very simple. Algebra here is not too bad actually. But first to the plugging in problem, okay? In the plugging in problem, just plug in anything like, anything that you like. Since we have so many of them and putting them in the boxes, just plug in numbers. Let's say, let's pretend that we have a thousand of them. We have, let's pretend, I'm going to do it in a different color. So let's pretend that we have a thousand. 
I have no idea what thousand of what. It doesn't, as I told you, it doesn't really matter whether we have candies or we have orange juice. It makes no difference. We have 1,000 of them. Let's pretend that we're going to put 100 in each box. Keep your number simple. Keep your number simple. Also, let's pretend that we have already filled up seven boxes. Now it's very simple. If you already fill up, if you already fill up seven boxes and each box contains 100, that's 700. You have 1,000 altogether. Well, you got 300 more to go. So how many more boxes are you going to fill? Three of them. How many more boxes are to be filled? The answer is three. Answer is three. Now we go through all the answer choices and we plug in the values here. We plug in the values from here and anything that gives us three is the answer. Let's begin our story. S is 1000 minus, this is a waste of time, it's not going to work. R and N. R and N, 100 times, 100 times 7, that's not going to give us 300. That's not going to give us 3. We're looking for 3, that gives us 300. That is not the answer. Answer choice B. Let me change the color. If I keep writing with red, it's very, very difficult to erase. Answer choice B says S minus N over R. S is 1000 minus N. N was 7. There you go. 7 over R is not going to work. It's just, it's, you can stop right there. That's not going to give us, that's not going to give us 3. Answer is not B. C says R S minus N. R times S is going to be as you can see, uh, n is only 7. By the time you multiply r and s, r and s, that's going to be a huge number. Minus 7 is not going to give you 3. Answer choice D says, s over n minus r. s is 1000 over n. There you go, you can stop right there. 1000 divided by 7 is not going to give you integer. 1000 does not go into 7. So this has to be integer because that's an integer, because we're looking for 3. That's not the answer. The answer is E. Answer is E. Let's see what E says. Let's see what E says. E says S minus S over R minus N. S was 1000. 1000 minus R, which is 100. 1000 divided by 100, that's a 10. Minus N, and N is 7. 10 minus 7 is 3. There you go. We're looking for 3, and that gives us 3. The answer is answer is E. Answer is E. Now, if you didn't want to do all that, if you didn't want to do all that, we could have actually done the algebra. Algebra is very simple here. You see? Algebra is very simple. Where can we do it here? Let's, let's erase this thing so we can do the algebra. You see we have total of S. Total of S. And we, put it, we, are, putting, we are putting R in each box. If you're putting R in each box, that tells, that tells us that we need, we need S over R boxes. Makes sense, doesn't it? If you have S oranges, and you're putting R in each box, it should be S over R. It should be S over R. We need S over R boxes. We are told that N are already filled up. N are already filled. We already filled up N boxes. Well, if you already filled up N boxes, and this is how many boxes we need, S over R, then the number of boxes that we need to fill still must be S over R minus the N. The number of boxes we need minus the number of boxes that are already filled. Which is exactly what that is. S over R minus N. That's all. That's how simple it is. Do you understand? There's nothing to it. Another way we could, another way we could, have, another way we could have looked at it is this way. Each box, each box takes R. Each box takes R and we we are going to put them in, put R in each box and total of S put, uh, put R in each box Oh there we go, N I already filled up, N I already filled up, okay let me, let me pick up the story here So let's, let's raise this thing, now we are going to do it different ways each box takes R oranges. We have already filled up N. We have already filled up N boxes. 
If you already fill up n boxes and each box takes r, we already can get out this many oranges. We have a total of this many. S is the total, which means we have this many more to go. S minus n r. This is many oranges have to go, and each box takes r. There you go. This is the same as that one. If you simplify this thing, s over r minus n. Because s over r, because when you, when you separate them, r is going to cancel out here, minus n. There you go. That was the end of that page. That was the end of that page. I did it again. I explained way too much in the last one. I do not like it. I hate it every time I do it. I don't know why. I have this compulsive nature of, uh, of just keep going. Sometimes the things are too simple. You should just leave them like that. And the best thing to do, if I were taking the exam, if I were taking the exam, I would have just plugged in the numbers instead of taking a chance with the algebra. Because it's very easy to make a mistake with the algebra in your thinking process. Very easy to confuse the variable like I just did a little while ago. Don't do that. Just plug in numbers and then look for the answer. The way we plugged in numbers, we were looking for something that gave us 3. And there is only going to be one answer choices that are going to work out to be 3. You'll never go wrong. If you want to get hold of me, as I said before, if you want to get hold of me, if you want to work with me, just send me an email, kashwaniprep at icloud.com, and we'll see what we can do. We'll meet again tomorrow, and we'll pick up where we left off in the data sufficiency problems. All right? Bye now.